And hello everyone, that was the trailer for my new upcoming game, I'm Just a Slime. I wanted to go ahead and announce that here and kind of show you the trailer. It's not a very good trailer. I am not too good at making trailers, as you can tell. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of had to throw something together because Steam requires trailers for their games and stuff, so yeah. Anyway, it is a uh, classic RPG in the vein of, you know, Final Fantasy and stuff like that. Not to the same quality, of course, but I mean in terms of you going from place to place, walking around with save points. Um, you can't just save wherever you want. There are specific areas you can save. Um, you can go to towns, help monsters. Uh, there's random encounter battles where uh, you, you can just walk around. I'm trying to go from point A to point B in the wild, and you'll just randomly attacked. And there's, of course, actual monsters on the map that you run into and then you can also attack, or will attack you, I should say. Um, so yeah, it's one of those kind of games. Um, and to go a little more in-depth, you play as a slime, you know, the weakest of the monsters that everyone's like, oh, they're, they're weak. They're the starting enemy in any game, pretty much. And... Uh, you have to go on a journey to remove a dragon from a nearby mountain that moved in. And this dragon, they, um, well, they moved in and it caused a bunch of problems. Uh, mainly being that when they moved in, it scared a lot of the stronger monsters away from the dragon, which caused a, like a, a cascade effect. So now all the wild monsters are, you know, kind of rampaging outward attacking all the weaker monsters and then pushing them further out, which in then turn frightens more weaker monsters until yada yada yada. And then the slimes are basically getting pushed out of their territory and causing slimes to die and whatnot. And so a lottery was held, and it was decided that you, the slime, are going to go on a journey to get rid of the dragon, either fighting them, killing them, or just asking them to leave, which is probably what only a slime could do is uh, just asking a dragon to leave because a dragon can't fight a slime, right? Or a slime can't fight a dragon, I should say. Anyway, that's the basic premise. Um, there are a couple things that I think are unique to my game. Uh, well, not necessarily unique, but kind of in the, in the vein. The one thing that is, I'm pretty sure, definitely unique is when it comes to random encounters, I kind of don't like them. Sometimes you're just trying to get from point A to point B, and you really don't want to fight anything, and, oh, random encounter, ugh, so annoying. Especially if you're, like, already overpowered and strong, you don't necessarily want or need to fight anything, right? Um, and then other times, you're like, man, I could really use some level ups, so you're just basically going back and forth down a path, and you're like, come on, come on, monsters, monsters spawn. And it never happens, right? Or it takes forever to happen. Which is why my game has a unique feature, which is allowing the player to set the enemy spawn rates for random encounters. Now, there's three sliders in the game that you can choose from. An enemy uh, rate encounter, which is from 0 to 100%. 0 sets the encounter rate to, as you would expect, 0. So no random encounters happen ever while that is there. And then anywhere up until 100. And then what happens then is any time the game tries to trigger a random event, it goes by that percentage. It takes a random number. If it's above that percentage, um, a battle will happen. If it's below that percentage, it will not. Um, actually, if it's, I guess, below, one way or another, you have an 80% chance if it's 80% to have a random battle occur. If a random battle does not occur, there's a cooldown period of a couple of seconds, I think it's two seconds, and then another battle tries to happen, but it adds like 5% to the previous random battle. So if it was 80% chance before, it's now an 85% chance. And it continues if another battle doesn't happen at 85, two seconds pass and it tries at 90%. If 90% doesn't happen, adds 5%, waits two seconds, does a 95% chance happen? No, and then it goes to 100%, of course. Uh, that's kind of what the, the main um, encounter rate slider does. 
Then there is the enemy number slider, which is from one to six. It can't be zero because, well, the above slider, the, the um, enemy encounter rate, that one is what dictates whether or not enemies can spawn at all. So if you just set that one to zero, it's going to not spawn anything. But if you want random encounters, but you only want, say, one or two monsters to spawn at a time, you can adjust the slider anywhere between one and six, and that'll be how many enemies at maximum can spawn. Um, there is a possibility for less to spawn, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, in the rare occasion, and I'm going to let you all in on this secret, in the rare occasion that an enemy cannot be spawned, by the one to like six slider. No enemies spawn, a rare enemy will be spawned instead. That will uh, give you a lot more experience and be a little stronger, right? And for those rare enemies, basically what happens is uh, I think by default, one enemy has a chance of like 80% or like something, no, I think one enemy is 90% chance of spawning. It's a really high number, right? Um, so if you have it set to one, you're gonna have that much like chance to have a rare enemy spawn. And then the second enemy has like a 85% uh, chance of spawning, for example. And it kind of goes less and less and less to the, the maximum of six, which I think at six, the sixth enemy has a 60% chance of spawning and whatnot. But in order for you to get the rare enemy, the more enemies you have, it kind of lowers your chance of getting a rare enemy because it has to hit each one of those. Nope, not spawning this one, not spawning this one, not spawning this one. So it gets like to 0.00 something percent at the end on a rare enemy. Uh, yeah, just FYI. Now, for the last slider, which I think is kind of fun, is the time between spawns. Or time between uh, like random encounters that can happen. And this is a slider from 1 to, I think it maxes out at 60. So it gives you 60 seconds, from 1 second to 60 seconds. You can set the timer however long you want. And what will happen is whenever an enemy is defeated, whether it's a random encounter or an overworld encounter, which is what I call the uh, normal monsters that end up being placed on the minimap that you can run into and fight. Um, the timer resets. So if it's set at, let's say, I think default is 10 seconds, um, and you get into a battle, and it ends, that 10 second timer restarts. And that gives you 10 seconds before the next battle can possibly happen. Now that's like the minimum time. Because like I said, if the battle fails to happen, it's gonna wait two seconds and try again. And if it fails again, wait two seconds, try again. So even though it's 10 seconds, it could still potentially take you like, 20 seconds to get a battle. Not necessarily, I don't know how the math works out, I just randomly said 20, but it could take you a little bit longer. So there's that. Which is why it's great to set that down to one, set the enemy uh, encounter chance to 100, and the enemies to six. If you really want to grind some experience, you can do that and just walk back and forth, wait the, the one second between battles. It, it might like figure out to a couple of seconds depending upon various code. But, um, and then, wham bam, you're done. Uh, you can just get into a battle after battle after battle after battle. Don't have to wander around forever just uh, trying to get that little bit of experience grind or uh, the currency, you know? And, uh, yeah, I think that's a very neat feature and I absolutely adore it. Um, and it's great. So that, that's kind of one of the unique features. The other unique feature is that you're a slime. You're weak as hell, right? Um, very rarely is the main character of a game also the weakest character of the game, right? And you're weak as hell. Um, you do one damage all the time. All the time. So you have to rely on your allies to help. Now, the slime can be a tank. Um, you can adjust its agility, not agility, you can adjust its defense to the maximum. Well, there's no maximum. You can literally go, like, to a thousand if you wanted to really grind that many levels. And uh, basically, he is going to 
always just tank damage, and you can, you can get a bunch of health, but, you know, slimes are weak. They can only do one damage. That's just how it is, right? So you meet allies, some other monsters who are you know, being threatened by the dragon, and they are basically what makes up your backbone of your fighting force. So you can use your slime as a tank, and then also use like items to heal your teammates and stuff like that as you go on this journey, essentially. Uh, but there is a second path, a little bit of a darker path, um, which is if you decide to have your slime learn absorption, which will allow you to absorb monsters, gain their stats, and your attack stat will actually, that was my phone, will actually matter. What do I mean by that? Well, previously, if you do not choose to take the absorption skill, no matter how high you increase your slime's attack attribute, it's always going to do one damage. So you could have a hundred attack and it's going to do one damage. But if you take absorption and you get it up to 50, you'll be able to do 50 attack. Now, the way that attack works is different in my game. And I'll get into that. Um, it's not just a flat 50. There's different things to take into consideration. But that, that's basically the two main branches. There is technically a third option, kind of hidden halfway, roughly halfway through the game, um, that you can embark upon if you choose to not take absorption that will allow your slime to do more damage. But it comes at a cost. No spoilers. But yeah, that's, that's basically the game here. So there's two different paths you can take. Technically three if you really want to get into it. And it involves you going, regardless of which path you choose, you go fight the dragon and then go home, essentially. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to fight the dragon. And those who do not fight the dragon might get rewarded in other ways with some extra content throwing it out there. Um, but in addition to all that stuff, there's little secret paths you can take that lead you to treasure chests that have stuff in them. And if you talk to people, you can learn a lot about the world. There's also little side quests. There's not a lot of them. I think in total, I have maybe five quests. If you talk to monsters, they'll tell you to do something for a reward of items and the currency, which is monster cores. Um, little cores that are inside all the monsters. After you kill them, they drop little fragments of the cores that make up the currency of the game. I thought that was a nice little touch there, rather than having monsters deal in gold. Stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that is essentially the game. So let me talk about the, uh, the attack and defense thing. So let's say you have 10 attack, and your enemy has like 5 defense, right? Now if you choose a normal attack, that's 10 attack against 5 defense, you're going to do 5 damage to the enemy, right? Very simple math. Um, but there's also skills in the game which take your base attack, again, 10, and multiply it by however much that specific skill happens to be. So um, let's say you have a skill that does between 2 to 3 damage. The game's going to roll some dice, going to determine if you're going to do the 2 or the 3, and then it's going to multiply your attack by that number. So if you get a 3, you're going to deal 30 attack to that person with 5 defense, Minus that 5 defense, you're going to do 25 damage to it. And that's how um, my you know, system works. Now, to make things a little more fair, the enemy does have a bit of an advantage um, in the fact that some of the stats for the, uh, the people needed to be rebalanced a little bit. And I couldn't necessarily rebalance every single thing. I had to kind of add a little extra thing, because they all use similar skills, and I didn't want to make a whole bunch of you know, different skills and stuff like that um, that were unique to each monster. Uh, forget, never mind, that's complicated. Anyway, the monsters that you're fighting, uh, they have a little bit of an advantage in the fact that if they're going to end up doing one damage, the game rolls a dice again and takes the target defense, which is like your uh, player defense, minus like 5% of your player defense, and 
then takes their attack minus that. So it's going to take like, um, instead of 100% of your defense, it's going to try to take 95% of your defense minus and see if that gives you anything different than a, a 1 or a 0. And if it does, it'll do that instead. That way the player just takes a little damage. So it's not just all 1s getting hit every single time you level up your stuff um, and whatnot. But in addition to that, they also have skills, which they can use. And again, uh, they have the same ability. So if their attack is like 100 and they have a skill that goes 2 to 3, they can do between 200 and 300 damage to you, right? And just kind of knock your teeth in right there. But you also have your defense to deal with. But if their skill is going to do 0, they can have a chance to, instead of doing 0, they will do just 5% of their attack instead. Um, that way, you're, you're still taking damage, it's not all just ones popping up, because as I was playtesting, I was like, man, everything is just ones. <laughs> this is uh, kind of sad to see, really. So I made it a little bit differently, and it, it, it's still fairly balanced, even with this, um, because the, the player does get a little stronger and whatnot. But then again, only I have been playtesting it, so I'm really... You know, hoping that if people do play it and they don't like something, they'll be like, hey, this boss was way too easy, this boss was way too hard, uh, the monsters feel like paper, I can just like go back in, increase some stats, and be like, okay, give it a try now. And uh, have a little bit of fun that way. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the long and short of it. There's a number of different levels, a number of different villages that you can explore and talk to people and whatnot. I, I guess one of the main factors I've not touched upon is the fact that there are two different types of monster. There is the wild monsters, which you'll be fighting, which they're characterized by not having a black outline around their sprite. And then there's the non-wild monsters, which do have a black outline around their sprite. Um, that's actually not necessarily... Uh, Something that I intended from the get-go, as I was uh, commissioning the artwork of the uh, monsters, the guy I was getting them from happened to have all of these um, already made monsters that you know didn't have black outlines around them. And then some of the ones I did get from him did have black outlines, and those were the ones I was initially going to use for the um, sentient monsters that can actually think and aren't just wild ones. Um, and so I was like, hey... I want all these like wild monsters, but can you just not put a black outline around them? That way there's like a differentiate, differentiation. It's, there's a difference between them, right? And I went with that. And it, I felt like it, uh, it's really gonna make some stuff. Cause you have like wolves that are wild and wolves that are not wild. And some of them have black outlines and some of them don't. And you can easily tell the difference because of that. So it's really nice. But yeah, there's, the two different things, which are the, the sentient monsters and the non-sentient monsters, essentially. The ones that are wild and just go off instinct, and the ones that can uh, talk with each other and have intelligence enough to build villages and whatnot. And that, that's kind of how the, the world works, in a, in a sense. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, that's the game. Uh, feel free to check it out. And, you know, let me know what you think and whatnot. It, it's definitely a lot better than the previous game that I mentioned on this channel, which was uh, Slime Evolution. Slime Evolution is garbage compared to this one. Um, utter garbage. Basically, Slime Evolution was my first attempt at making a game and, like, getting a feel for Unity. This one, I'm fairly okay with Unity now. I have more experience making a game, and I made one. And this game... I speed ran it myself as the developer with the, the non-absorption ability. And it took me four hours, basically, to beat it. Um, and that was just speeding through everything, not talking to a single person I didn't have to, and just going zoom, zoom. And bam, that was it. So you're looking at roughly, if you, if you do everything, talk to everyone, uh, if you're just going one path and not going to do multiple playthroughs, Maybe five to six hours is what the game will be. And I'm thinking about putting it up for uh, $4.99. So five bucks, roughly, US dollars, of course. So not that bad, I think, for you know, five to six hours of gameplay. But uh, it, it might not be the most exciting. But then again, it's, it's the first game that I've made that I'm you know, somewhat proud of, right? And uh, 
That's great. Also, if you're curious, just just curious, you're curious about how much it cost to make the game, excluding my labor um, and whatnot, because it's it's taken a while to make. And if we figure in labor, it would probably be much more expensive. But in total, I spent roughly $3,000 to make this game. In terms of getting assets for it, like the, the animations, some music, um, effects, uh, backgrounds, all that kind of stuff, roughly $3,000 just to, to get all that. And then there's also the $100 that you need to pay to put it on Steam in the first place. And speaking of Steam, that's where it's at. I'll have a link in the description for it. And you can go ahead and find it there if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and grab that. And after this, after this game, I want to make another one. But I also want to touch up um, Slime Evolution because it's bad. Yeah, I really don't want like a, a really shitty game in my uh, like repertoire, right? I don't want to have a game that has like, uh, honestly, it's so bad that I, I've not even looked at the reviews on it. That, that Slime Evolution game. I know it's not great because it's just a, a vampire survivor's clone that I kind of just made in order to learn stuff. Because I was like, oh, this looks like I could, you know, do this stuff. But I want to go back and I want to add more to it. I want to, you know, actually make it progression based ish so you have like some sort of progression i'll leave the base game how it is where the first playthrough you uh go through a basically game where you end just just end completely uh, but i do want to add some tweaks to it to make it my own thing add some new spells and attacks and stuff like that and whatnot and i will i'll do that myself right and then update the game and hopefully people more receptive to it i've also made that game cheaper um, I think before it was like three ninety nine. Now I think I have it at like a dollar or two dollars or something. I forgot exactly what it is, but uh, yeah, I was like, mm. you know, for like what it is, it's way too expensive. So I dropped it down. And then there's also my other game, War of Bellrook, which is a text based game, which I think is like now just a dollar. This is just a text based game, um, and I put that there. And also, all of my games are kind of linked together by lore. Um, Belrook exists in I'm Just a Slime, the Kingdom of Belrook. And then also, if you played Slime Evolution, the slime from Slime Evolution is actually sort of subtly hinted at being in I'm Just a Slime. It's like kind of mentioned that he's one of the characters. So I just think that's a little neat. Probably going to do that with other future games as well. But in addition to fixing up Slime Evolution... I want to make another game, a new game, and I think I'm going to have it be a sort of a puzzle game. And I'm going to reuse assets from this game that I've already made and you know, do that. And I'm going to make some other ones myself, um, but it's going to be a very simple puzzle game. It's going to be like one of those, uh, uh, you have a room and you have some things to interact with and your basic goal is to get out of the room, right? Um, so you're going to basically play a slime again, my idea for that one, and then you're going to go through stuff. I'm going to call it Slime Experiments, uh, because basically there's going to be a, a narrator who's talking to the slime, who uh, is explaining different things about the puzzles and how to work them, and they're kind of studying the slimes to see how intelligent they are by giving them all these puzzles, right? So there's going to be like a series of puzzles that the slime goes through, and then involve things like pushing blocks. I'm going to have conveyor belts, probably levers and gates. Um, at some point, I think I want to have like infected slimes that try to like touch the player. And if the player gets touched, the puzzle resets. So they have to kind of constantly be doing the puzzle and also avoiding the slime that's coming after them that the uh, scientist guy has infected. And I think it'll be kind of neat but as the, you know, as you go through the puzzles, they get slightly harder and they incorporate things from the previous puzzles and kind of stuff like that. I think it'll be cool. Um, and I think I might actually stream myself making that game. I won't stream myself making the other games, but I think making a game from scratch and streaming it and potentially posting it here onto YouTube, like the making of kind of thing, I think that would be fun. And it's definitely going to be a lot easier than making an RPG. 
Because let me tell you, I think I spent like a week on the battle system alone. Uh, just getting it to work. And everything else was just a mess. I spent a month playtesting it to get all the bugs out as well for this game. And Wow. I gotta say, I'm proud of it. Yeah. It might not be the best game, the most polished game, the most best looking game, but for someone who's making a game by themselves, and basically just, I'm just paying artists to make stuff for me so I can put it in the game. Uh, I think it's, it's really well, really well done. Um, yeah, I even got some original music out of it too by commissioning people to make music for me. And some of the songs turned out mwah, great. So yeah, and I can actually use those songs for anything. Since uh, that was kind of the terms we set when we did that. So I can even use them as like stream background music and stuff like that. So that's gonna be fun. Anyway, before this video turns into a huge, huge thing, uh, that's really all I wanted to say. Check out I'm Just a Slime. Like I said, the link is going to be in the description of the video if you want to go and bookmark it. Uh, also, I forgot to say the release date. Steam is kind of weird with release dates. You have to like wait two weeks after submitting it to the store in order to do it. So I think it's going to be either the 28th or around the 4th, depending upon which day I triggered their system on. Because... Uh, I don't know if it's just the day that I first like brought it up and uploaded stuff to it, or if it's the day that I clicked, hey, go coming soon on the uh, thing. So we'll see. Anyway, it, it'll just wish list it if you're interested and uh, take a gander at it. But yeah, that's all for me, everyone. Thanks for watching and uh, look forward to the game if you're interested. Bye for now.